Let me show you how I went from this to this. If you're anything like me, you like to get out and travel in your RV. Our family in particular, we like to find somewhere quiet off grid where we can boondock for up to a week at a time. We recently upgraded to this trailer, which I absolutely love, except for one thing, the fridge. So apparently the trend in the RV industry is to switch to these 12 volt fridges, which are good for many things, but horrible for boondocking. Even though the trailer came with this 200 watt panel, after only one day of boondocking, my 200 amp hour lithium battery was down to 20% power. The trailer came with this GoPower PWM charge controller, which even after several days with the fridge turned off could not return the battery to full charge. Instead, I opted for this Victron MPPT charge controller, which is doing a much better job. So let's break down these costs. First off, I purchased two 385 watt panels for $240. Now these panels were left over from a previous project that I did on my house. But you can find deals like this on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Next, I purchased this MPPT solar charge controller from Signature Solar for $383. This Victron model is capable of 150 volts input from the panels and 70 amps output to your battery. Also from Signature Solar, I purchased the mounting rails and mounts. Also, I spent about $95 on wire for a grand total of $813, which for a 770 watt system is pretty good. All right, the first thing to do is take off this old panel, which might be a trick. So the problem is that the fasteners that hold the panel to the bracket are mounted before you install the bracket to the roof, and they're impossible to get to almost. Uh, if I can't get to those, I'm gonna have to pull this putty off and hopefully be able to get the bracket off the roof. All right, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. All right, so now that the panel's off, I'm gonna give this a wash so we have a nice blank slate to work with. Now I've laid out in pencil, marking the corners where I want the solar panels to go. For mounting the panels, I'm going to be using these mini rails, which I purchased from Signature Solar. Came with three holes in the back, so I ended up drilling a couple extra holes, just so we could have more points to mount it to the roof. We want to ensure that we are securing these to the rafters. So one way to find them is to use a magnet and just push it along until you hit screw indicating where the rafters are. To fasten these rails to the deck I'll be using these quarter inch lag screws, some washers, and I'll put some die core lap sealant underneath the bracket and on top of the screw heads and of course we'll be pre-drilling the holes. Now for these side ones, I decided to cut these in half, put three holes in each one. the first panel is installed I did have to relocate a few of these mounts just due to the curvature of the trailer so I doubled them up ended up with 10 total mounts eight of which are into the studs and two are just into the OSB on top that's it for the two panels so let's go hook up the inverter I installed the charge controller inside my pass-through box next to the inverter which I installed in a previous video so here it is over here. Now this Victron was super easy to install. I brought the solar wires from underneath the trailer through this conduit up. The positive goes through this 20 amp breaker 
And then it just leads back down here to the PV connection point on the charge controller. And then from the battery side here, I've got the heavier gauge wire and those go up behind and through this 80 amp fuse. And here's my positive post and my negative post. My battery is just on the other side of the wall here. You want your battery to be as close to the charge controller as possible for best results. Make sure you don't skimp on your wire. I use this four gauge heavy duty welding and battery cable. The Victron manual calls out for fine stranded copper wire. Make sure you don't get tempted to save a little money going with this cheap aluminum stuff. A good thing about these cables, they come with the shrink wrap and the lugs. So we can just throw it into our lug crimper here and give it a little love tap. And there we go. Now I'm going to connect the battery first to the Victron. See it booting up here. And then I'm going to load the app and make sure everything's working before I turn on the solar. Now I forgot to mention this small dial on the bottom of the Victron is for setting which type of battery you have as I'm using lithium. I have it set to number 7. As you can see the battery is fully charged and the solar panels aren't really doing anything right now. I'm going to turn on the fridge inside the trailer here and see if we can get that to jump up. All right, I'm going to leave this fridge on and see how it does running just off the solar panels for a few days. All right, as you can see, the voltage is 13.51 and it is in a float state, meaning it is pretty much fully charged. The fridge is running at the moment. That's why we're seeing the 100 watt draw from the solar panels. But what's really cool is that it's been fully charged, my battery, at about an hour after the sun comes up, the battery is fully charged. And as you can see down here at the bottom with Pmax, I'm getting at times up to uh, 693 watts, it looks like. So this system is cranking out much more than the other system, which I think the most I ever saw from it was about 70 watts. So I'm very happy with this system. I think I will be able to boondock indefinitely as far as it comes to power anyway.